Ooh, computer parts. This, my friends, is an Intel Xeon E3 1270V2, the fastest processor I currently own. It was about $200 on eBay. I got a reasonable price and we're about to test it out because this processor is from China and that's the packaging. So let me run you through this. On the outside we have just a normal Chinese packet, nothing fancy, just plastic. Uh, and on the inside we've got plenty of bubble wrap, just an absolute mother load. And inside that bubble wrap we have a fancy looking and entirely non-ESD protected plastic processor holder. Wonderfully carved out of the finest Chinese to hold any Intel processor very sturdily and provide no ESD protection, so I'm not too confident in this thing having actually survived. On the plus side we do get thermal compound. What's that? How 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 Yeah, that's gonna be using that. But yeah, let's just get this thing up and running and see if it's actually alive. Well, I do know that it's alive, but I'm not sure if it's stable because I did cheat and test it uh, in another motherboard earlier. However, we still haven't tested this motherboard at all, really. Uh, we don't even know if this powers up after I fixed it, so it's going to be a bit interesting. And second thought, let's just give the Halzen yes stuff a go. It looks like a just bog standard OEM. Thermal pace is going to be good enough for me. Oh, a bit droopy. Oh, wow, that is... That is droopy. Oh, that's the actual stuff, all right. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Nice fat blob on there. I welcome any and all cooler installation tips and hate mail. This is how I've always done it. Just rub it in until there's just a very thin layer of thermal compound in between. Ah, there we go. One cooling tower installed. So, I think we might actually be able to power this thing up now. Alright, so, I've connected the power supply, we're shooting the monitor, and if everything goes right, we should be getting some flashy LEDs over there when I flick the switch, or rather when I poke around over there. So let's give it a go. I powered straight up. Uh, that's normal for Intel stuff that's actually working. It should pair off in a moment. I'm a prophet. Now this should be starting to go mad in a moment. There we go, and we should be getting picture. Come on. Oh. We've got beeps, so that should fix it. Yes, indeed. It's alive! And we're in some... Yeah, fight shell, I've got no idea what this is doing. And I'm nice off to a power supply which actually has SATA power, and I've hooked up a random uh, junk drive. I haven't tested that, I have no idea what's on it or if it even works. And um, let's just uh, see. We're going to get some system up and running in this. Power, please. There we go. Is it going to do anything? Yeah, I did reset the bias to get it out of that weird EFI shell thing. Uh, it instantly rebooted. I didn't see if it actually did tech to the drive. Uh, into the EFI. And in here we do get all the info, I'd say. We've got. 8 gigs of memory as we'd expect, 
clock's going to be reset. Time's going to be reset. Do we have... Intel Xeon E3 1270V2 at 3.5 GHz. Excellent. Uh, so do we have a drive? Yeah, we do have a drive. Uh, it didn't throw any horrible uh, post error codes. So I can imagine that drive's going to be good enough for a test install of Windows Justice Trust Test of this thing. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to set up this to something sensible in general and. Uh, it's going to get to run Prime 95 for a couple of days. Ah, who needs USB? That doesn't sound very good. That doesn't sound very good at all. <laughs> I'll get more. Plenty more drives. <laughs> All right, by some kind of miracle, we're actually in. So let's just see if we can uh, uh, get a hint as to how bad that drive actually is, because it's making horrible noises all the time. This computer does feel snappy, though. Let's see. Health warning. Reallocated sectors. What's it warning about? Eh, yeah, UDMA error count, that's just a bad cable sometime. Uh, 1200 start stops. 30 power on hour, oh, that's got to be wrong. Yeah, that, that, that's something wonky with that drive, but who cares? All I want to do is that, and that, and that. And now this thing is going to be sitting for a while. And we're drawing uh, 75 watts and uh, pretty much full load. Which is uh, about what I'd expect really. It was using a similar amount of power when I tested it at the mate's place with an identical motherboard although a better power supply. And now we just wait because I want to see if something's going to be going wrong here. Oh man, that poor, poor drive. It's not doing anything, it just keeps on doing that. <laughs> we better do that. And there are our temps. Now that's not too bad at all. That's actually far superior to my... A 2500K. Oh, that's what. 52 degrees per core and perfectly balanced at 3.7 gigahertz. That's not bad at all, are they? It's just dissipating 45 watts. That's hmm, surprisingly low. I would expect it to be dissipating a bit more. Alright, we've now been running overnight. Alright, and we've now been running the entire night, and for the last half hour or so, I've just placed the fan right by beside the heating, letting it just ever so slightly pull air through it, allowing temperatures to get rather tasty. And the process has been hovering between uh, 80 and 90 degrees for a while, and we still haven't run into any issues, so thankfully, it seems as if. Uh, my expensive Xeon processor has survived the Chinese bubble wrap handling. And with that, I think we're ready to put this thing into my proper server. So thank you for watching. Cheerio.